All righty then. Jerron Boots Ennis gets a new opponent, Eddie Hearn. Rematch room. They announce Jerron Boots Ennis of Philly has a hometown Philly fight against none other than David Avocado. Terrence Crawford leftovers. It has just been confirmed by rematch room on the zone. Jerron Boots Ennis versus David Avanesian for the IBF welterweight title. Avanesian has a record of 34 and 1, 18 knockouts. And he's going to fight July 13th, the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia. This is a late replacement to Cody Crowley. The Cody Crowley fight. Cody Crowley, listen. I've already made videos about this explaining why Cody Crowley is out. If you don't know what's going on in the world of boxing, that's your fault because I've made the videos about it. He had an eye injury, recently had eye surgeries. Doctors did not approve him. Anybody who is suggesting that Cody Crowley ducked because he didn't receive medical clearance from the doctors, you sound stupid. I wish Cody Crowley a healthy and speedy recovery you know you never want to see fighters you know on the sidelines for injuries and stuff like that but it does happen now boots is 31 and 0 28 knockouts so my thoughts on the fight i'm just gonna be real i'm not really impressed i'm not impressed at all this is why for starters outside of pbc when i see these other promoters who undoubtedly go through with all promoters if you've been promoting for several years, this happens from failed drug tests, PED tests to fighters being injured, fighters pulling out for. I mean, we've even seen like Ryan Garcia pulled out of a fight one time for mental health reasons and, you know, anxiety or whatever. So this happens. People pull out. Sometimes it's late. Sometimes you have a little bit more time to prepare. But what I noticed PBC is the best at handling it. It looks like there's almost a contingency plan or a plan in place should this happen. When I look at some of these other promoters and when they go through these things, despite having went through them, like Eddie Hearns, for example, he's went through this multiple times where like Anthony Joshua, his initial opponent, Dillian White pops dirty. So you have to get in a late replacement. They got Hellenius or Joshua was supposed to fight Big Baby Miller. And same thing, you had to get Ruiz a late replacement. So this continues to happen throughout boxing and it's going to continue to happen for some of the reasons I provided in this video. And I just feel like a lot of these other promoters outside of PBC, it's almost like they get caught with their pants down when it does happen. Like there's no like instantaneous fix and it's seldom where they get an equivalent type of fight going, right? And from my knowledge of boxing, one of the best saves that boxing has ever seen for a late replacement, and some of you guys don't know this, was Lennox Lewis. He was supposed to fight another heavyweight. That fighter fell out and was removed. They brought in Vitaly Klitschko late, and then we got a classic fight out of that. Lennox Lewis and Vitaly Klitschko, which is a hell of a resume name for Lennox Lewis, who did win the fight. So that's an extreme example. And I'm not expecting it to be that legendary because that doesn't happen too often. You see, based on the fact that I'm pulling from a fight that happened before some of you guys were watching boxing or were even born. But it does happen. But other more recent good saves to me would be like, you had Sebastian Fundora, who was elevated to fight Tim Zhu, and clearly he was capable of beating Tim Zhu because he beat Tim Zhu. So he was on the undercard, supposed to fight against Sergey Boachuk. They replaced him, elevated Fundora to the main event, and they replaced him, the vacancy and the void that he left in the Boachuk fight, which would have been a really good fight, Fundora Boachuk put him in the main event and then Boachuk ends up fighting Brian Mendoza which was a great opportunity for both fighters as well 
Boachuk looked very good in that fight. So that's a great PBC, as I mentioned earlier in this video, a great save that they had because Fundora ended up beating Tim Zhu, and now Fundora is likely to fight Errol Spence in October. And then Sergey Boachuk, he passed his test with flying colors, beat Brian Mendoza, who had beaten Fundora. So that was a great win for him. And now it looks like Boachuk moves on to perhaps fight Virgil Ortiz Jr. So these are meaningful fights that led the winner to their next deal, which is other great paydays and other fights. Boachuk, Virgil Ortiz Jr., great fight. Fundora is a two belt champion after beating Zoo, and he's going to get the fight in AT&T Stadium against Errol Spence Jr. So that's another great save versus you look at Eddie Hearn and he just got his team slaughtered in the five versus five. And then so all those fighters lost in the five versus five, including his team captain, Deontay, the bronze bummer Wilder. He has this American potential star that was built up through Showtime working in tandem with PBC, even though he wasn't signed to PBC and Eddie Hearn, many people suggested this was Eddie's greatest signing ever in America with Boots Ennis. He's supposed to fight Cody Crowley, an undefeated fighter and a highly ranked guy. And he was ineligible, as I mentioned throughout this video, only because of his eye, which you can't, that's a medical, he can't get cleared to fight. So you can't really blame someone for that. And he mentioned this at the press conference that he was coming off two eye surgeries. So why would he lie? Like, if anything, he would have, if, if you were just trying to get out the fight, why even take the fight? And why would you have mentioned that if you were just going to pull out anyway, you could have just did that. So I believe Cody Crowley really has eye issues because it, it just, it seemed a little bit too structured to have planted the seed at the press conference, did the face off and did all that. And you didn't, you weren't really going through this stuff. So the save is now David Avocado, who Terrence Crawford just one fight before knocked out brutally. And Terrence Crawford, he, he, it was kind of like the Delorme fight for Crawford where he just wasn't really opening up. And I, he, Terrence Crawford, he's 40 and 0, so he kind of does that. Sometimes he gives people like a false sense of hope and then sees what they have. And then he just opens up on them and then it's no, no competition. And then he'll whoop them. He did it with Thomas Delorme where he was losing like the first five, six rounds or five rounds or whatever. And then he just, as soon as he opened up, it was a wrap. So that was in 2022, really almost 2023 because it happened in December of 2022, right? So Crawford beat him and a year after that he fought david avocado fought in the uk against the unknown guy and he ended up winning that fight so he has one win against sergey ambomo you know i don't even know who that is and now he's going up to fight jerron ennis listen avanesian is getting splattered period this is not in my opinion, that's why I said I'm not impressed. This is not a great save. This is not a great save at all. This is no better than some of the other opponents that Jerron Ennis has faced. And Jerron Ennis, he's so convincing as a fighter that you need other convincing dance partners to make it a good fight. And I understand like he's dangerous. So at the end of the day, maybe some guys don't want to step in there with him. But at the same time, that's your you signed him and that's what you're going to have to deal with. There are other options to me that would have been just better, just better fights, even outside of Cody Crowley, Stanionis being one of them. But this is what they came up with And the great ego Stradamus strikes again. Remember when I told you guys that it would likely be a guy and I even said David Avocado and guess who it is? David Avocado. I literally predicted this. And I told you, don't get your hopes up for a Stanionis or a Rashidi Ellis. Don't get your hopes up for a Brian Norman. Don't get your hopes up that Boots was going to fight Connor Ben. And a lot of people, I tell you guys how this game works. They don't want to listen 
to the king of boxing talk and each and every time you guys are let down i'm not let down because it's hard to be let down when this is your expectation if you go into a pizzeria a pizza parlor and you're expecting it to be trash and then the you eat the pizza and it is trash is like you didn't really have hired expectations for it so i knew this was coming down the pipeline for one it's a late replacement two it's boots in who is a dangerous fighter top names maybe want a little bit more time which is why maybe you have to pay them more or at the very least you would have to you know make the purse worth it for them so this is what you get you get a, a david avanesian with four losses lou he this is a guy that lost to lamont peterson back in 2017 and this was in cincinnati on the broner versus granados card the reason i remember it so convincingly is because i was there i was there for it right i went to that fight so lamont peterson beat him in 2017 this is just a kind of a step backwards for me personally mean machine stepped up and said that he would like the fight with boots ennis and i think he's kind of a free agent for me i think even mean machine would have been a better option and i'm talking about realistic options for jerron ennis like crawford that's not a realistic option see i don't do that there's a lot of people that will just name people you, I mean, I could do that all day, but that's is stupid. Crawford has a title fight at 154. He's not worried about boots right now. So a realistic name would be the people I mentioned. Rashidi Ellis, maybe. Uh, Stanny Onis. Brian Normans. Mean Machine, even. And I think even a Mean Machine would have been far superior to an uh, Avanesian fight in 2024 for boots. That'll show us something. Because Mean Machine, as we know, he clipped terrence crawford and drop terrence crawford so if you're going to fight a crawford leftover i think that's a more stern test because at least he has some pop and mean machine also stopped in 2018 this guy that boots is about to fight so everyone keeps saying like earn with hern but and they encourage jerron ennis to jump ship instead of signing to pbc and this is their first fight I get it's a hometown fight, but I've already expressed this. Jerron Ennis is already popping in Philly. You don't really have to build that crowd. So this is just somebody who's going to get whitewashed and, in my opinion, destroyed. And I see very little that a 5'8 Avanesian with four losses who can't beat Crawford, who couldn't beat Mean Machine, who couldn't beat Lamont Peterson. I don't really see what he does with Boots Ennis. So it's kind of a waste of time. And other than that, the card's not that great. So it just becomes something to watch for boxing fans. And as a champion, it really doesn't prove anything for Jerron Ennis. Like this is, to me, it's not a better fight than Roman Villa, who's about to fight on this PBC card coming up this weekend. You know, there's that fight was my favorite Boots performance. So this is definitely a step back. This is just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think.